Hi, everyone. My name is Linda Gallick. I am the Bellin Health um, Health and Wellbeing Consultant, and I'm so happy to have you joining me today. For those of you that were with me last week uh, for part one, uh, thank you for your feedback and thank you for joining. But if you didn't join last week and this is your first one, it'll still be very beneficial for you to be with us today. So thanks for taking some time for yourself. It's really important to continue to do that as we deal with whatever the uh, rest of the year is going to bring for us. So today we're going to dig a little bit more into those well-being dimensions and specifically what we can do in those dimensions to help us if we are doing some of our work at our homes. All right, so last week, for those of you that joined me, um, you'll remember this, we actually did a little bit of a poll and had you describe one word of how you were feeling during the COVID-19 pandemic. And here are some of the words that came up. And what's neat about this application is that if more than one person shared a word, that word becomes bigger in the word cloud. And as you can see, more than one person shared overwhelm. So I think many of us can relate to that feeling. We've all experienced that. So if you are feeling that way, please know that you are not alone. We truly are trying to get through all of this together. Another question we asked last week was, how are you feeling about working at home? And as you can see, we have a good chunk of folks that participated in the poll that said kind of would enjoy half and half. So maybe half at home and, and half in the office. So definitely would encourage you to continue to talk to your leaders, talk to your supervisors, and try to come up with a plan that is beneficial for everyone involved. Because I think now more than ever, we do have some additional options that we can explore. Then the other thing that I think will be really important as we move forward in our content today was I asked you about the dimensions of well-being and how they have been affected for you. And I had you rate these on a scale of what are least affected and what are most affected. And as you can see, our top ones are going to be social and emotional. And now my PowerPoint's getting away from me. So let's go back here. So you can see these are our different dimensions and whether you did the survey last week or not, you can kind of get a sense of where the group is at and then how your responses compare to the group. All right, so let's talk about that emotional well-being. So according to a recent Kaiser Family Foundation poll, more than half of Americans have reported that worry or stress related to the outbreak has led to at least one negative mental health effect. So that can be anything from it affecting your eating or sleeping, maybe drinking more alcohol, having the uh, physical symptoms of headaches, stomach aches, and then that emotional sense of maybe having a shorter temper because of everything that you're dealing with. So again, you are not alone. And we can start to see how those dimensions of well-being are really interwoven, how an emotional thing can lead to a physical response. So all of those things are tied together, and that's why we really like to take a look and, and see how we can work on all of them. This was actually a survey that had been done by the Wellness Council of Wisconsin, and they had asked which well-being areas employers were planning on prioritizing their support for the remainder of the year. And as you can see, that mental health and that emotional well-being is definitely being paid attention to by our area employers. So if you find yourself needing some assistance in that area, know that that support is there and your employers realize that that is an important element for you. So please continue to talk to people and find out what your resources are because there, there definitely is an awareness like perhaps we've never seen with everybody uh, dealing with everything that they are. Again, we also are looking at physical health, some safety things, resilience, the social connectedness, and uh, also looking at stress, burnout, and then the, the diversity and inclusion practices as well. So this was something I had come across kind of early on when we were first in our stay at home order. And it was something that really helped me and I shared it at that time, but I think it continues to be helpful as we look at how we can keep ourselves safe by practicing some of those distancing practices uh, to, to keep the big groups of people maybe a little bit more at bay. But this changes our focus. This really 
takes us to a mindset of what can I do at this time? So question number one, what am I grateful for today? And all of us have something that we can be grateful for today. Um, who am I checking in on or connecting with? So not only to help yourself, but to help others as well can really help our emotional well-being. What expectations of normal am I letting go of today? We've had to do some of that in 2020. We've had to let go of, of some of these normal things and, and find new ways to, to connect and, and be together. How am I getting outside today? Being outside is good no matter what time of year. I know we're in Wisconsin, it's starting to get a little bit chilly, but uh, we can definitely layer up and, and still get out there. How am I moving my body today? Moving your body, your physiological um, stance of your body, your body will produce chemicals when you move, and that will connect to a better emotional well-being. So it is important for you to continue to do whatever feels good to you in terms of movement. Might just be a walk around the block, might be going outside playing with your kids or your dog, but keep moving. And then another thing that can help our emotional well-being, what beauty am I creating today? What am I inviting in? So that might be a creative process for you. Maybe even you're cooking a, a beautiful dinner for your family. That's beauty that you're creating. So keep focusing on that. I want to center us a little bit and just kind of help everybody take a deep breath and, and take a moment. I know all of our days are super, super busy. And uh, this is hopefully going to reset us just a little bit. One of the things that we can do to help our emotional well-being is to be more mindful or to do a bit of a meditation. So I have a meditation that I'm going to share with you today. And uh, this is truly one of my favorites. And you can do this with yourself at any time in any place. You could do this if you were on a plane. You can do this at home. You can do this at your desk, at work, whatever works for you. Uh, what I'm going to invite you to do is take a look at your surroundings and we're going to use this as a practice to do so. And if you're not loving your surroundings right now, I have a beautiful picture that you can focus on. All right, so I invite you to join me on this. Begin by taking a deep breath in and out. Look around the room, pick out five things that you see. They can be whatever catches your eyes or objects that are all the same color or shape. Keep breathing. Now pick out four things you can physically feel. Maybe it's the temperature of the air, the fabric of your clothing, or maybe the sensation of sitting in your chair. Take another breath. Now take a moment to listen. You may even want to close your eyes. List three things that you can hear. Is the wind rustling the trees outside? Do you have a pet or a child in the background? Did your heat just kick in? Listen for those things. Take another deep breath. Notice two things that you can smell. It might be the laundry, maybe you just cut the grass, or maybe it's food that you have in the crock pot. Always some smells around us. Take one more deep breath. Lastly, notice one thing you can taste. If you can't taste anything, maybe take a sip of water or something else to drink that's nearby. Or think about the last thing that you tasted. Now take one last deep breath. All right. I am hoping that you enjoyed that as much as I did, even for myself, just running it, it just kind of centers me a little bit. So that's a, that's a practice that you can do really at any time, any place. So feel free to just kind of remember that. It's the five, four, three, two, one technique, really engaging our senses. It allows our brain to block out some of the other things that's going on and just focus on those senses. So it is a, a, just a quick, easy, powerful tool. So here are some other uh, core habits of well-being. So here are some other things that can kind of tune us into our, our dimension of, of, of well-being. So things like gratitude and compassion, being optimistic, 
Um, also just focusing in on that health and well-being. Maybe it is the sleep, maybe it is the physicality. Also the forgiveness, the mindfulness and savoring. So this was actually a presenter I saw at a mental health conference virtually a couple months ago. And I, I was really uh, intrigued by the idea of, well, these are some of the, the cornerstones of what we can do to, to continue to improve our well-being. So I wanted to dig into savoring a little bit because I think this goes along with changing our mindset in terms of dealing with the pandemic and all the changes that we've had surrounding us. So these are the five paths to savoring and savoring is really being in that moment and then looking for the good in it. And if it isn't a current moment, there's ways to look ahead too. So let's talk about these a little bit. So basking in accomplishment. I have no doubt that every single one of you tuning in today, or if you're watching this, record this recording later, you have accomplished something during this pandemic that you never thought you would. And how wonderful. Take this moment to pat yourself on the back. It really can just help you to see how far you have come. Remembering the good times. This may also be a time to pull out those memories, pull out those, those family albums or those journals and remember some of those precious moments that you've had. Again, there's a lot to be grateful for. Marveling at life's wonder. Maybe it's looking at the stars. Uh, for myself currently, I cannot get enough of the fall leaves. Every single year they come, every single year, I think they're absolutely gorgeous. And um, it really is a, is a life's wonder to me that that, that, that happens, but it, it just tunes me into something really positive, which, which helps. Luxuriating in the moment. So that might be something like really savoring that cup of coffee in the morning or really holding that child a little bit tighter when you tuck them into bed, just really being present in those precious moments. And there's a great movie uh, for those of you that are looking for a family-friendly movie, Inside Out. Uh, it's really a cute movie that validates emotions. And I think it can be powerful for anyone of any age right now to say, it's okay. It's okay if you feel sad. It's okay if you feel anxious. It's okay if you feel happy. Those are all very valid emotions. So that's, that's a cute movie that, that I would recommend. And then we can also anticipate future joys. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic will not last forever. And uh, even in the meantime, there are many things that, that can bring us joy. All right, so I also want to just make everyone aware, if you aren't already aware, of our mental health moment series that we are doing through Lifesaver. So I am partnering up with the amazing Charles Latour, who is one of our behavioral health therapists, who has really done an amazing job just helping bring us some practical tips helping us stay in the moment and, and cope with all the unexpected things. So we always do these the second Thursday of the month. We're actually going to be having one a week from tomorrow. So make sure you watch for the invite for that. And if you don't get it, uh, be sure to reach out to us and we'll make sure that, you, that you're able to join us on that. All right. So we were promoting that at the time too, but I just want to keep moving us along to be cognizant of time. So another dimension of well-being that you as a group did say has been heavily affected, and I would agree, is the social well-being aspect. So we came from a place where we could go and do uh, whatever we wanted with whoever we wanted to this place of being cautious and trying to slow down this virus. So it is important to find other ways to be connected, no matter where you stand and in, in how you feel about what, what is safe and what isn't safe, uh, there are great options for you. So here were just a couple of things that I've experienced uh, since the start of all this. I had a cousin that got married and uh, my brother uh, drove around with a sign and we took some pictures and, and posted on their Facebook page the, the day that they were getting married uh, since all of us could not be there, but we still wanted to congratulate them. So that was really fun. Of course, we can have our fun little happy hours with our friends uh, from a distance. And actually, I found, you know, what's the advantage of, of having something virtually like that is that 
uh, number one, you don't have to travel. Number two, it almost felt like we were able to be together longer because we just were savoring that idea of being together virtually. Uh, and then the bottom right hand corner, we had a little family drive by parade uh, for someone. And uh, that was another fun way to to celebrate. So continue to be aware of what you need to be socially connected and, and try to connect to your family and friends in, in ways that you feel comfortable with to keep that going. Very, very important. Going back to those quarantine questions, who am I connecting with today? Really would recommend you connect with at least one person outside your household every single day, even if it's virtually. You know, part of what makes the social well-being kind of tough, um, we, we now are in this age of where social media has really increased uh, what we call FOMO, and that is fear of missing out. So you may see other people doing things that you don't feel comfortable with. Remember, um, it is your choice. It is ultimately your safety and maybe the safety of your loved ones that you're taking into consideration. So I would just encourage you to keep, keep that lens in mind. Uh, there have been some cool things that have happened because of the pandemic. I mean, there have been online concerts. Uh, I have a couple friends that have done parking lot coffee. So meeting from a distance, but meeting outside and, and having coffee can be a safe way to, to be socially well. And then of course we have our family and friend happy hour gatherings. So some people have also been affected greatly financially because of the pandemic. And so this is something to kind of check in on yourself. Is this the kind of stuff that may be keeping you up at night? Maybe your job has been modified in a way that, that uh, affects you financially, including maybe you've had to adjust some things because of helping your children do school at home. So this is something to ask yourself if this is something that's bothering you and maybe time to do something about that. So you can always start by tracking what you're spending and what you're making. That's a good way to start to get your hands around your financial well-being. It's good to set some goals in terms of financial well-being. Uh, what do you want to accomplish by the end of the year? Or what are you saving for? What things are important to you? And then, of course, it, it never hurts to meet with a financial advisor. There's so many great folks out there that will meet with you and just help you kind of get those things in check. So don't be afraid to reach out to your employer if you need those assistances, because they may have programs in place for you as well. And just a shout out for those of you that are working at home with your kids, whether they're little or whether they're in school. And uh, here's a funny cartoon where you get your kid all set with that project to be busy for a while. And you think you're going to have this quiet time. And like five minutes later, your kid is back and saying, I'm done with that. So a shout out to all of you dealing with that. Um, we recognize, we see you, we know that this is really tough stuff, um, but you are doing a great job. We know that you are. All right, and then another uh, dimension of well-being that may or may not have been affected for you, but I think in all for all of us in some way, shape, or form, definitely that career occupational well-being. So this is a really great time the pandemic has allowed us an opportunity to maybe step back and really evaluate what our jobs are, what we enjoy, what we don't enjoy. That separation from the workplace, I think, gives us more of a zeroed in lens on our actual work. And we can start to see what we enjoy or what we're good at, what our strengths are, maybe what our weaknesses are. And there's been no better time to start something new. So now is a great time for you to say to your leader or your supervisor, hey, I think I'm really good at this, or I think I've really um, decided that this is, is where I see my strengths and, and this is where I think I could make a difference. Have those conversations. Now is a great time to, to really do that because um, we've all had the chance to kind of step back and evaluate that a little bit. I also want to just put in a little caution flag of because if you're on this program with me, you're probably working from home and your home life and your, your work life are really, really intersected. And it's very easy for us to let that work life take over. And so I just encourage you to set some boundaries for yourself. Make sure you're taking care of yourself uh, so that you have that, that correct balance. 
All right, another dimension of well-being, uh, the intellectual well-being. So we want to keep that mind stimulated and, and interested in things. We want to challenge our minds to keep it growing and moving. So now is another time that uh, we have great opportunities to maybe learn something new. Perhaps there's a hobby that you've always wanted to take up that you've felt like you never have time for, and maybe now you do. Um, it's also good for our brains to get outside. It's very stimulating for our brains to see different environments. So make sure that you are trying to do that. And of course, we here in Wisconsin, we can be outside in the snow and the cold. It's fine, right? I have friends that actually already ordered some uh, battery heated jackets. Like they are ready for the winter workouts. So it's very cool. But um, we also want to be cognizant of maybe doing things that don't involve an electronic screen because many of us are here, we're doing meetings, we're doing Zooms, we're, we're in front of the screen all day long. Do things that stimulate your brain that are outside of the electronic screen. So for myself, I never knew it, but I have absolutely developed this crazy love for doing puzzles. It totally got me through last spring, last winter spring, um, when we were really at home a, a great deal. And uh, I actually have some puzzles already lined up for when the weather starts to get chilly because it's, it's really something I enjoy. And I, I never would have known that had it not been for us uh, working at home and, and such. All right. And then also we want to pay attention to our environmental well-being. And when I say environmental, uh, a couple different things in that category. So... If you're in your house, you are in this environment, and um, this is the environment that has become your workplace. So what can you do to make it more work light for yourself or make it more enjoyable for yourself? So how are your ergonomics? You know, do you have a good setup with a comfortable chair, uh, with the right level of, of workspace, those types of things? And then things that you can do to maybe help yourself out. Is there something that inspires you or helps you focus? What was it that you had in your office that maybe you could bring to your home that would help you? Just, just a thought. The other thing about environmental well-being, I really encourage you to switch up your, your stations if needed. So sometimes I go to the kitchen counter and I stand for a while. That just kind of helps my mind reset a little bit. So I would encourage you to do that too. Uh, one more thing on environmental, we want to also be careful what's in our environment. So as a lot of people have talked to me about the um, COVID-19 pounds that has come with the pandemic, it may be because some of the things we have in our houses aren't necessarily the best choices. So that's another way that we can pay attention to our environment, maybe get rid of some of those junky things so that we can make those healthier choices. And then finally, our last dimension of well-being I want to talk about today is really that spirituality well-being. And I heard something on the mental health conference that I had attended that just really struck me in terms of this. It's the three C's, connection, compassion, contribution. Those are the three things that are going to bring you more in terms of spiritual well-being. So if you're asking yourself, is there more? Is there more to this, to this craziness of, of everything that we're experiencing? This may be an area of growth that you want to really um, dive into. So spiritual well-being can be anything where you're, com you're connecting to something that is more than yourself. So it certainly can be a spiritual, religious type of thing, whether you believe in God or a greater power, but it also can be connecting you to a movement or maybe to a charity or a purpose that you feel really strongly about. That's going to create that connection, that compassion, that contribution. That's going to increase your spiritual well-being. And I think that this is a big tool that can kind of help us for the long haul. So you can ask yourself, how can you contribute to your family, your workplace, your community during this time? How can you be that person that makes a difference? Because you can be. And so I would encourage you to do that. So through all of this, and I'm just going to stop sharing this for a second here. All right. We're coming back here, and I just want to share with you this great video because it really isn't necessarily about being perfect, and I want everyone to remember that, that all of us are truly doing our very best 
And I know for myself, this has made me grow in ways I never would have anticipated. And yet I'm really grateful for that opportunity. So this is a great video that um, I came across about not being perfect. And I hope that I hope that you enjoy it as much as I did. Perfection. The condition, state, or quality of being free from all flaws or defects. I think the actual definition should be a 10 letter word describing something that doesn't exist or prison, maybe straitjacket. See, perfection is a virus, a tumor of growth. It infects the mind of who it attaches itself to until it eventually destroys the host. I hate the very word perfection. It has driven me crazy for years, guided by fear. I was constantly comparing myself to my peers, stressing and striving to reach some idea that only existed in here. Oh, you thought perfection was real? Well, I disagree. I mean, have you ever seen a perfect tree? In real life, have you ever gone into a forest and seen a perfect tree? Nah, see, they all got a little something going on. Some lean this way, some lean that way, some have a little too much moss, and some got a whole bunch of bark that's been ripped off, but somehow, they're all beautiful. But when it comes to people, we don't seem to see that we are all beautiful in all of our expressions, so we dissect ourselves into pieces, judging each other, thinking perfection is something we can achieve, which leads us to feeling depleted and defeated. But Salvador Dali said it best, have no fear of perfection because you'll never reach it. Ladies and gentlemen, there are two doors in life. Door number one, be perfect and be admired. Or door number two, be real and be loved. I say choose door number two and choose it quick because life's too short to try to live up to something that doesn't even exist. It makes no sense. So please create your own unique expression. Color outside the lines. Be the pretzel that refuses to not. Be the marble that doesn't quite roll right. Do the dance that nobody's ever seen before. And don't worry if people stop and stare. I mean, if the leaning tower of Pisa was straight, nobody would care. See, when mistakes are made, beauty is birthed. You know why they call it the Model T? Because that's how many letters it took for Henry Ford to get that darn car to work. So don't worry about always being first and getting it right. I mean, Sony's very first product they ever made, it cooked rice. So embrace your mistakes, they are to be savored. Failure is the condiment that gives success its flavor. And true success is being yourself in a world that's constantly trying to make you someone else. You know, I was reading the other day about a Japanese tradition called Kintsugi. What they do is, if an object breaks, they fill the cracks with pure gold. Because they believe that when something suffers damage and has a history, it is all the more beautiful. So I say love your cracks. You may call it brokenness, but it is the way your light will shine through. And if you have no one in your corner, then consider me your supporter and we will smile together as society tries to diagnose our gifts as disorders. You don't need to be a perfect person with perfect makeup, perfect skills, or a perfect build. Because the truth is real people aren't perfect and perfect people are real. Isn't that a great one? Just love that one. So I think that's a great reminder for all of us that it isn't about being perfect. As we navigate and we continue to grow and improve with everything that we've been faced, uh, know that you don't have to do it perfectly, but you do have to keep trying. All right. So just to wrap us up, uh, remember those feelings that we talked about in the beginning. That doesn't have to be the end of the story. All right. So what I would really encourage you to do, if I can share my content one more time here, <laughs> if it will let me. All right. I would encourage you to focus on 
upside of the pandemic. So how is that possible? How is there possibly something good? Well, there is good. And think about the, the gifts we've been given. We've had more time with our loved ones. We've been able to slow down. We've learned so many great things. Maybe you've gotten some projects done that you've been putting off for a very long time. You've read some new books and maybe we're enjoying our homes and our families more than ever. What a gift. What a gift. What I really also want that your attitude does matter. Your attitude matters in how you're going to continue to navigate working from home, schooling your kids virtually, whatever it is that you're dealing with, uh, your attitude will matter. So what will you do today? How will you be that positive influence? And another great way to just continue to adjust our attitudes is always to remember what can you be grateful for today? So again, we were looking at the dimensions of well-being and how we can continue to strive that balance. So I would challenge all of you, and if you want to share it with me in the chat, I would love to see it. What's the dimension of well-being that you're going to work on? What is the one that really struck you with these two presentations that you're thinking, yeah, that is something that I need to pay attention to? I know for myself, um, I am very excited to continue my puzzle projects. So that's a good way for me to keep, keep my brain going. But hope that you all saw something today that will inspire you to continue to improve in those dimensions. And remember, it's not about perfection. So thank you so much for joining today. If you have any additional questions for me or you want to reach out, uh, again, my name is Linda Golick. I do the Lifesaver Wellbeing Series. So if you are not on our list for that and you want to get those emails and you want to be included in that content, please let me know. You can see my email there, wellnessconsultant at bone.org and my phone number. You can also find us on some social media outlets. You can look for the Bell and Lifesaver Wellbeing Series on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, and you will find all the great content there. Otherwise, I appreciate you all taking some time and joining me today, and uh, I hope you all have a great rest of the week. If you had any questions, uh, feel free to chat those in. Um, otherwise, I, we are at a half an hour, so I want to be respectful of your time, so feel free to be on with your day. Thank you so much, everyone.